In this video, we're going to talk about the solutions to the partial truth tables showing that these arguments are valid. As always, if you have the means to financially support the channel and you enjoy the videos, you can join as a member for two or five dollars Canadian a month, or you can like, share, comment, and do all those fun things to help me out. Either way, I appreciate it no matter what you do. Anyways, let's get into the solutions here. Okay, remember, when an argument is valid, what this means is that the premises, so in this case we have a premise, we have a conclusion, if we have the premises uh, as a valid argument, so P1 arrow C, this should be a tautology. In other words, if the premises happen, whether they're true or false, we should get the conclusion, which means we should never have a case where we have one arrow zero. This should never happen. So with the partial truth table, what we do is we just assume, okay, what if, what if that happens? What if we have a zero? So that's what we're gonna do here. This is like our what if. So what if we have a zero here? Well, in order for this to be a zero, that means that we have one arrow zero. So this means that P arrow Q arrow P has to be true. And that means that P arrow Q arrow P arrow R has to be false. Okay, if this hypothetical row exists. Therefore, let's do P arrow Q arrow P arrow R. The same thing has to happen. P arrow Q has to be true, and P arrow R has to be false. And because we have P arrow R is false, we know that P has to be true, and R has to be false. So we're just using the arrow over and over again, just to see what the values of P, R, and Q have to be. Well, it's nice, because at this point, if I can do this in yellow, we know what the value of P is. We know what the value of R is to make this row false. In order to make this row happen, we have to have P is true and R is false. So we can fill in values for P and R everywhere else at this point. So we can put ones under P. We can put, I'm sorry, this should be P arrow Q arrow R. So we can fit that in, which means actually this row should be, or this column should be false. Uh, we know the P here has to be true, so we filled in as much as we can so far. Okay, well, this is nice now because we can start filling in other values. So, for example, here in P arrow Q, we know that we have the conditional being true. So if P is true, that means that Q has to be true in order for this conditional to work, because we cannot have one arrow zero, because we're saying here this is true. So now we also know the value of Q. So we can put in Q. So Q is one. Okay, so now what do we have? Well, we have Q arrow R, that's one arrow zero, so that gives us a zero here. Okay, so at this point, we fill in all the values and everything seems nice. But we have to do another check. We have to make sure that all of these values actually line up. So what I wanna do is I want to remove a bunch of the markings I made, just so we can take another look at this. So what I wanna focus on here are all the connectives. So right here I see P arrow Q arrow R, this is true. But hold on a second, hold on a second. I have a one here, I have a zero here. So this connective is actually a one arrow zero, which means this should not be true. <laughs> this should be false. But in order for this to happen, in order for our what if situation, in order for this entire conditional to be false, this has to be true. But if this is true, then our assignment says that this has to be false. So this is an impossible situation. We cannot have that connective being both true and false at the same time. Therefore, our assumption is false. It is impossible to have a row where this entire conditional is false. Therefore, every row must be true. This must be a tautology. Therefore, this argument must be valid because this well-formed formula is the representation of the argument. So uh, that was one practice question. If that was a little confusing still, go watch the lecture video and uh, run through that again or run through this explanation again or ask something in the comments below. And I'll try to clarify this. We have one more example here. Let's go through. Uh, P or Q, not Q, therefore not P. So we have P1, we have P2, and we have our conclusion. And basically, if this is valid, 
then P1 and P2 arrow C, this should be a tautology. Since that's what it means for an argument to be valid. It means the premises entail the conclusion, which means P1 and P2. If they're true, then C must be true as well. If they're false, it doesn't matter. Okay, so because we want to show this is a tautology, we want to come up with our hypothetical what if. So let's see, this is our what if. So what if we have a road that's false? This should be impossible. Let's show that it's impossible. So if we have a zero conditional, we should have one arrow zero, which means that P or Q and not Q should be true. And that means that not P should be false. Well, if not P is false, then we know that P is true. Okay. Uh, so because we know that P is true, we can fill in P being true over here under our P and we can see what happens. Okay, we know that P or Q and not Q is true. So this means that uh, we must have a one and one. So that means that P or Q has to be true and not Q has to be true. So I should put that under the not there. So if not Q is true, that means that Q is false. Okay, uh, so we can put Q false here. Hmm. Okay, once again, we have to ask ourselves, are there any problems here? Well, hmm. let's take a look at this. So we have one arrow zero. So that means that P has to be true, which means P is true over here. We have an and, which means we must have one and one. So Q is here, Q is here. Well, we don't run into a problem. So because we don't run into a problem here, actually, this works. It is possible to construct a row where this entire thing, this is false. Therefore, this is not a valid argument. This is not valid. We can have a row that's false. So yeah, if this were valid, this would be impossible to construct. But because this is possible, because this assignment of truth values is possible, it's not a tautology. It could be contingent, it could be a contradiction, but it has to be a tautology to be valid. Therefore, it's not a tautology, it's not a valid argument. So if we look back at our first things, sure, our first one is valid. Once again, my Ds are very ugly when I write them fast, but the second one is actually not a valid argument. So why do this? Because let's be real. If you're in a real class taking a real course and you're given a question like this, listen, it's philosophy. They're logicians. They're some of the, they're some of the meanest academics around. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They're not that mean. But this happens all the time in exams and tests and assignments, whether it's intentional, whether it's by error, you have to know what your result gives you. So in this case, we were able to construct a row that is false. So it's not a valid argument. This can happen. So was it a trick question? Yeah, kind of. But this happens in real life and academia. So I hope that threw a little bit of a curveball, and I hope it helped out. But as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them as soon as I can.